We began by asking different people how they found joy in their lives. In the middle of our search, both her fathers died unexpectedly. Does it take a devastating experience to awaken us to our pain, mortality, and joy? I have nothing, but I have everything. Oh, my God. I really have a, a true joy in my life. Mm. I feel freer to be joyful if it's also all right to say where I'm not joyful. Example of the joy. No jobs to do, nothing, and to sleep and eat. Being cozy. <laughs> if I can share it with somebody. It's all right, sweetie. The wonder of these beautiful things. <laughs> I am but two days old. What shall I call thee? I happy am. Joy is my name. Sweet joy befall thee. Hey, little baby, let me tell you a secret. This is a magic place. A magic space. We came here to laugh. To have joy. When the bar breaks, the cradle will fall. Down tumbles. Jennifer, Sadie, and all. <laughs> How come do you have a gross throat? I have a what? A gross throat. Oh, okay. that's because of my wrinkles. How come do you have wrinkles? Oh, you get them sometimes if you want them. <laughs> <laughs> One of the first things I remember was something my mother said to me. I would be sitting on her knee, and she said, this is what you are to me, a jewel, a joy, a gem, a treasure. Now, I know she said that more, but this is how I picture it. And I've never forgotten that, though it's probably 76 years since she said it. Can you please get a little bit off? You, mean, <sighs> you want to put it on my nose? Is it... When I was little, I wanted to be grown up. Before I knew it, I had all the responsibilities. And now I don't have time for all those things that I missed. Well, I think that when little children come into the world and their whole beingness is right there. Very often, they learn quickly that who they are in their being is not acceptable. I know it's a sad thing to say, but most people do not believe they are lovable if they are who they are. And they believe they will be rejected or they will be abandoned. And they learn at a very early age to perform. If they please somebody, if they find out who's in power and please that person, then they are acceptable. But that means that their soul is buried deep, deep underneath all this performance. 
so that the depth that, that we're talking about in terms of joy simply are not present. The world of myth is not present, the world of storytelling, the world of the imagination, the world of creativity is not present. So that the human being is diminished to a two-dimensional cardboard creature. We've lost touch with our soul. What do you call that inside of you? It's forever. Your soul? Say it again. Your soul? Some call it the soul. Some call it the spirit. I call it the butterfly. You can't see it with your natural eye. You can only see it with the spirit. That's you. When I was a kid, I was really allowed to be a kid and have fun and have friends and make our own fun. Those were the days where we really had to create a lot of homemade fun. And as an adult, I've always found that with my friends. <laughs> having people to play with and really share our passions with and have a good time with and be playful with. Spark off of each other. Oh, it's joy. Joy, it's something you wash dishes with. When I... Oh, that's wonderful! <laughs> something you wash dishes with. Do like that. Keep it open. Keep it open. Keep it loose. to do keep ah yeah yeah coming coming now now coming look there look there do do again again more 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 all right now lots of birds to fly then all right see I consider the goodness of my bread is the natural sour which I slowly develop and the love and care I put in my bread, especially when I handle the dough. I like to touch and knead it with gentleness. I fall in love with the dough. I treat gently. With that, I have a good response. The people are very much communicate and I spend a lot of time chatting with them what I call it, fall in love with the talk. How are you today? No discounter? 
No, no disconto. My customer, when they look me from the other side, they will say to me the next day, oh, Pasquale, you talk too much with the customer. But I consider for myself more important to we talk and we communicate than be in other machine and say good morning and thank you and bye bye, you know. The job I do is not really a job, it's something which I enjoy, I fall in love. And, and I find our customers a, a, a very good response, they really appreciate what I do, what I create too, as a baker and as a human being. Some moments in my life are so beautiful, I wish they could last forever. But then I feel sad when I realize these moments are short-lived. <laughs> he who binds to himself a joy, doth the winged life destroy. He who kisses the joy as it flies, lives in eternity's Sunrise. You can kiss the wind. You can kiss the sky. If you're lucky, you can kiss a butterfly. Then we're ready, we're ready for our teaching. And today we're going to talk about the joy of living, the joy of being alive, and the four sacred elements. What are the magic numbers? Four. Four, four sacred elements, fire, water, air, and earth. Okay. And with this, the purification is to have our thoughts, good feelings. And if we have any hard feelings, we have the power the power is in here and here. And we remove that. You feel good about yourself? Good. So we send our energy, our love. We pray for the animals. We pray for the people. We pray for the land. And then we always pray for ourselves last. The little ones can teach us. They teach us uh, lessons that we never knew before or lessons we forgot. So at a time of my life when I'm coming around that circle and she's just at her beginning, I realize life is sacred. Had I not been born with a disability, I would have been a professional dancer and if I have it my way, I still will. <laughs> Chairs is like bars, you know, in a way. It's also a, a form of freedom for me, too, but um, depending on how other people look at the chair is whether it's bars or freedom. It's easy to get lost looking for the answers. And it's difficult because the process of going through the questions can be painful. And the answers can take a long time.
His death was so sudden and so unexpected. My father had difficulty expressing his love and expressing how he felt, and that prevented us from becoming very close. I didn't spend a lot of time with him when I was little because he worked so hard. Sometimes he would tell me stories of the good old days when he played for the Maple Leafs. Those were special moments when he wasn't so serious. He didn't laugh that much and he rarely smiled, but there were times when we would really have fun. We would always get together on special occasions, birthdays, Christmas, Easter, and I always wanted things to be perfect. Last Easter, my mom said, so who's gonna say grace? And nobody said anything. And uh, my dad was at the end of the table where he always sat, and he stood up and he said, uh, I just, I wanna raise a toast to your mother. And he said, Your mother is the one. Her, her did everything for you. She's the one that raised you. And uh, he was saying that he was very sorry that he couldn't have been a better father. Even though he wasn't a bad father, he just wasn't around a lot. But uh, <clears throat> I think at that moment, he just needed to say, how much he appreciated her for what she'd done all the years when he wasn't able to. He must have known something somewhere in, in his heart. He must have known that he wasn't going to be around a lot long, longer because a month later he died. And I'll always remember that, the way, you know, the way that felt. Whenever my father would refer to joy, he'd use the Yiddish word, nachas. And um, we'd usually be sitting around the table. He'd ask me, when am I going to get my nachas already? And that would mean, when is he going to get joy from me? And I'd wonder, am I responsible for his joy? And of course, I'd feel responsible. And I'd worry, I'm not doing what I should be doing. I'm not giving him the things that would make him happy. And I would feel sad because that would create a distance between us and a distance within myself, because I'd worry too. And it was almost like we would share this legacy of worry and that would keep us apart. I'll never forget an argument that we had and both of us were arguing with passion. And he'd say to me, what's this that you call art? Art, it's just pachka, cream on the wall, painting. It's a true art is the flour that goes in the bread. It's, it's the texture, the fabric that goes into the cloth, the brick that goes into a home. That's art, but not paintings and all the other stuff. It's a waste of time. And I'd feel very upset and I'd say to him, Dad, you'll never really understand me or love me till you can understand my love of art. And then later, when I was about to leave, he'd say to me, you know, you can only argue with the ones you love. And when I heard him say that, I was very touched because he wasn't one who would express his, his love in a very direct way. And now it's been almost a year since he's died. And whenever I enjoy something beautiful or good, think of my dad. And when I'm worrying, I also think of my dad and I, I smile because I know it's something that we had in common. It's something that he struggled with and something that I too. But when we let go of that struggle, we can enjoy and love. I was thinking back to when my sister died She'd been sick, and I'd been going down regularly to be with her. One day I was down. Lunch, she was fine. When I came to help her with her supper, she didn't want it. And she seemed so still. So that night, most of that night, we sat 
I was holding her. And when finally she stopped breathing, naturally I felt badly, but I felt so good that I'd been with her. And that seems to make the biggest difference. Now, you plants must remember to bloom. I'm watering you very carefully. When you wake up in the morning and you see the sun shining, is that, is that, is that, is, want to join. it's right there, huh? It's right there. Is it in the air? No. Can you grab it? You can see it, you can smell it, you can taste it. Ooh. Something like love. Beyond Something like love. Beyond love, oh. Happiness is like a, a fleeting kind of thing. Joy is like an underlying contentment, and I, I think it's rooted in a belief system as well. What is joy? How do you sing for joy in the street? That's what I do with my bare feet. I sing for joy. It's in the gospel, it's in the Bible. Praise God with the bell, with rivers and tambours. That all creatures of have breath. Dance and say, get it in your soul. You got to be the trumpet and guitar too. You got to be the drum. Let all creatures, man, woman, child, bird, beast, fish, sing. Hallelujah! Glory! Joy in the street. And joy is just seeing any little thing, any oh, small little yeah. thing. Some happy little sparrow going fluff, 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 and it's like, that is joy. That's right. Those little guys squeaking and squalling, they're having a great time. That is joy. That's right. And joy is color shining. Joy is everywhere. What a wise woman. <laughs> joy is everything. Let's go. <laughs> You're so lovely. <laughs> Bye, princess. She loved Bye, me. Bye, prince. So that life is always new. Spontaneous. But people, I think, are terrified of the spontaneity. And they're terrified of not knowing where they're going to go next. Well, there's, there's no joy in knowing where, where you're going to go next. The joy is in the possibility. <laughs> Thank you.
Sergeant, speak George. Speak George. From the soul. We're gonna, we wanna go now. We wanna go. We're gonna work with him. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Joy, joy, joy. 